Do this, you want to do this one? And I'll give you this for the reading too. Look at that. Well, there you go. Let's see what we have for us here. Let's see what. Oh, let's see. Okay. Okay. This is new. When someone is being accused, keep quiet. When events are made public, there are always antecedents unknown to the majority. Things are not always things are not always as they seem, but they are in keeping with their inner values. Don't echo the accusations. Offenders and transgressors at least deserve compassion and chance to right their wrongs. Wow, it's the first time I hear this one. Don't be quick to judge, right? And the other one, and the, 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 next, the, the next message would be, start making amends. Okay, start making amends the moment you realize you are in the wrong. Start making amends the moment you realize you are in the wrong. Forget about surrendering to discouragement or remorse. Just as you must not persist in the wrongdoing, you must not beat yourself up in regret. Remorse's only role is making one aware of the wrong. Forgive yourself. Take heart and begin the task of personal rebalance by lessening and repairing the harm you have caused. Great messages right there. First time I think we got this. You want to say the prayer? Yeah. Mother, Father, God, Divine Creator, Thank you very much for one more day, one more morning, one more time together. And give us the wisdom to appreciate life, despite all the lessons that one day we will understand, that one day we will appreciate. Let us find the joy of the journey as we prepare ourselves for all the changes that are coming, not just to every single one of us, but to our communities, to this planet. And we humbly ask your guidance, your compassion, and your love to all of us as we transition to bring more light to our souls, to our spirits, to our minds. With that in mind, thank you very much. And we ask permission to our mentors and guides, inspiration for Daniel, to open our Spiritual Sunday this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everyone. So happy Sunday. Like I said, it is really great to be here with you today as we take a little bit of time from our lives, our busy lives, to just recharge our batteries, um, set aside some reflection moments so that we can consider our lives in general, because sometimes it happens so quickly and it goes by so fast. And in the blink of eyes, a year has passed, and now we are writing checks, if we still write checks with the wrong dates, because it's already 2024. And we just didn't realize, right, it comes automatically. <clears throat> so, so I want to talk a little bit about that cycle that just started, this new year. And when that happens, we often make new year resolutions. Here's the things that I'm going to do differently. Here's what I'm going to change. Here's what I'm going to accomplish. And all of those things are great. But it is also true that most people fail to implement their new year's resolutions because we just go back to doing what we were doing before. And sometimes it's just hard, right? Because we work so hard to do so many different things and we just want to keep going the way we are. 
and we feel protective of who we are and what we have accomplished and we worry that we're going to lose things and we just get sucked into the day-to-day -day and don't realize that embracing change is really what we're meant to do. And what I wanted to talk with you today is to take a couple of minutes to just talk about how change really is what life is about. And that resisting change is not in our best interest. That's a tough one. So where do we start? Since we're talking about cycles, I thought it would be interesting for us to put in perspective the whole universe. Truth is that our universe started 14 billion years ago, since Big Bang. And what is 14 billion? I mean, it's such a big number that sometimes it's hard to quantify. So I actually had to put the zeros down there so you can look at it. We're talking about nine zeros, right? A 14 followed by nine zeros. That's a lot of time. In fact, there is so much time that it's hard for us to have any sense of relationship. Like, how do we, what's 14 billion years? Right? I was just sharing how, you know, I get surprised when sometimes some businesses claim that they've been established in 1997. And I'm like, that's not that old. And then I realized, well, hold on a second, 1997 has already, uh, you know, seen about 27, 26, 27 years. It's been a little bit of time, right? But 14 billion years is a lot of time. So... I take the, I'm going to steal this idea from Carl Sagan, who's, who put things in perspective for me. And he's a, a famous American astronomer um, who I find very uh, interesting sometimes to, to read what he says. And he came up with the idea of the cosmic calendar. And what does that mean? For perspective, imagine that we get this 14 billion years and we put that into one year. That is to say, we split the 14 billion years as if it were one year. So that means that you know, every uh, day in our cosmic calendar is roughly equivalent to 41,000 years. But at least we know what one year looks like, right? January to December. So we have a sense of like how creation came about. So for instance, if we start the beginning of, of, of our um, universe on January 1st and December 12th is where we are, right? The, sorry. And, this, and, the, and the last day of December 31st is today, where we are, then January 1st is when the Big Bang came about, right? And the whole universe expanded and all those materials collided and there was all this growth. But the interesting thing here is that we are not going to see Earth form until September 14th in the calendar. A lot of time has gone by with those elements floating, combining, clashing, planets forming, galaxies floating away, and all those things. And in September 14th is when Earth detaches as a blob of gases from, a, from the Milky Way and becomes its own thing. And it's only on September 25th that life begins on Earth. And it's only on December 31st at 10.30 at night, that the first human beings evolve on Earth. So we are a very recent development in the great cosmos, at least in this universe, right? And here's more even what's fascinating. If human beings started about an hour and a half before midnight, right? Then I should tell you that Christ was born four seconds. Four seconds Sorry, four, four uh, seconds before midnight. So we have been in this incredible journey, but it's been very, very recent. But because our bodies are made from materials that have come through the eons of time, this has been our story too. And that's the story of the very large. But there's also a very interesting story, which is a story of the very little. If we also look at our bodies from the creation of our bodies and ourselves, we are going to find out that we are a universe ourselves, but that this universe is also constantly changing and is also constantly evolving. For instance, we have 36 trillion cells in our bodies if we're about 154 pounds, right? Again, that's 36 with not nine, but 12 zeros after. That's a lot of cells in our bodies, right? And if you are larger than 150 pounds, which I am, you can imagine that I have a lot more than 36 trillion cells. It's a lot of cells, right? And each of one of these little cells are changing, are multiplying, are being reborn, are passing away every single day. In fact, we see that our white blood cells 
they last about one to three days before they die. Our red blood cells are about 120 days, so four months before they fulfill their life cycle, um, and then they are replenished by something else. Our liver cells, for instance, 18 months. Every 18 months, we have completely different liver, so to speak, right? And the heart muscle, 40 years. 40 years until those cells pass away. Now, our neurons, which are some of our brain cells, they, they don't. They stay with us since birth. And that's a fascinating piece. Why do I say that? I say that because during this entire time that we are born in this physical body, our bodies are changing. Our red blood cells are changing, our white blood cells are changing, our liver cells, all kinds of cells are changing. So as we walk around, as we sleep, as we go through our work, we're changing. Our bodies are changing. Our universe is changing. Everything is changing at once. And that is the common rate of things. But you may ask, Daniel, that's just the physical stuff, but I now know that I am an immortal spirit. What about the spirit? Is the spirit the only thing constant there and everything else is spinning? Well, we actually learn in questions 540 of the Spirits book, which is a question that was really directed about learning the impact that we spirits have in the formation of Earth and everything else, creation of Earth. There is a wonderful sentence. We don't need to read the whole thing, but the, the piece here in blue is interesting, where the superior spirits tell us that everything in nature is linked together from the primitive atom to the archangel, that is to say, a very evolved spirit, just a language, right? Who also began as only an atom. So who you are spiritually has also evolved to the eons of time. We all started very small. And with time and experiences, we slowly developed ourselves to such an, uh, a point that today we are spirit donning a physical body who is a universe of cells who lives in a larger universe of the cosmos. Why do you say that then? Well, Change is the natural order of creation. Everything that you see or are is in constant change. As a matter of fact, stagnation, when we don't change, is the anomaly, is the thing that is not normal. And that is a, a big learning for us. Because most of the time, without thinking, we behave in ways in which we want things not to change. We hope things won't change, or we want to go back in time. But none of those things are possible, because the whole universe, our bodies, and our spirit is in constant evolution. And letting go of the fact that we want to control things to feel safer, to just hold on to things, is difficult. But it is what we're here for. And that is something that Spiritism helps us understand a little bit better as we understand the role of the spirit. It's not just what science tells us about the galaxy or our physical bodies. It's that which we also learned, for instance, in the Spirit's book that we just shared, that our spiritual history is also long. So when we begin to put these glasses on, when we see things differently and understand that everything that we see or seem to be is changing, then it becomes hard to deny the fact that we should pay more attention and lean in to change more openly. Because, you know, we know about reincarnation, but sometimes we forget that reincarnation is not repetition. We're not here to do the same thing over and over again. That's not why we reincarnate. We reincarnate to learn, to grow, and that means doing things differently. If we're just repeating our days, if we're just repeating our years, if we're just repeating our lives, then we are going against the grain of the universe who's telling us to grow. We do that nevertheless. We try to stay in the same job. We try to have our kids speak the same language that we, were, we grow up in. We try to uh, you know, fight any new changes or new projects in our lives or in the lives of others or our work. But life happens. So what is it that we need to do to embrace that and instead 
change in a positive way because I think that we have some competing ideas in our mind. Sometimes we don't like things to change because we're comfortable, we like things the way they are, and that's very okay. But at the same time, we know that things could be better, that we want more for our lives. And sometimes we lean in, ah, oh, I wish things were different, but at the same time, we don't want to change. And that is a difficult place to be in. So let's embrace that spiritual side of us that has been changing forever and trust that the Creator is supporting us and that we can make the move forward because that's what we're here for. We are here to change. It's simple as that. That's what we're made to do, to continuously grow, and growth is change. If we resist change, pain comes, suffering comes. So why do we do it? For this false sense of comfort? If only I keep things just the way they are, I'm going to be okay, I'm going to be safe. But no, you're not going to be safe. Because if you're not moving forward, you're not growing. So what is it that we can do to make sure that we lean in to that which the universe tells us and that we have a reassurance from the spiritual side is our natural state of being, state of growth? Well, how do we change? Each one is going to have their own opinion and their own method to doing it. But here's something that I find very interesting that I think is very simple in many different ways. Sounds complicated at first, but I think it's helpful. Let me tell you about this guy, this gentleman over here called Vygotsky. He was a Soviet psychologist born in the 1896 and, and passed away very, uh, very young, 1934. And he's a pioneer of the concept that children's intellectual development happens through social and cultural experiences that we learn as we interact with others and our environment, which has a lot to do with what we think about too, right? And he came up with this idea of zone of proximal development, which we call ZPD, which is a very fancy term for you to throw during a cocktail party because it sounds so learned, right? And so erudite and so sophisticated. Oh yes, I am working on Vygotsky's ZPD, you know, and that makes it sound really fancy. But the idea is simple here. Imagine that you have a circle in the middle, and these are the things that you can do already by yourself, things, things you, knew, you know. This is your world. Now, imagine that there is a middle circle, which is the things that you could do if somebody helped you. Learn, close enough to what you know. And then there is a third circle, which is the things that are so far out from what you know that you cannot do even if you have help. It's a simple way of looking at the world. For instance, if we get a third grader and you place him on college level physics classes, he is going to be all the way out in this other circle because he doesn't have the foundation to be able to understand that. Will he learn anything? Hardly. Because it's so far out from his comfort zone that he doesn't, he doesn't have anything that gets him there. He doesn't have a bridge. However, if you put a third grader in fourth grade math and a teacher, will he learn? Yes, he will learn. Because that is close enough to what he knows and with some help, he can stretch his wings and learn different things. Simple enough. But I wonder if we're also bringing that concept to our lives and to our New Year's resolutions. Are we wanting to be something that is just for, far out from our comfort zone that we don't have how to get there? Sometimes our New Year's resolution is, I am one to become a millionaire. Wonderful. Go for it. Do you have the skills to get there? How about you just work a little bit less and you say, I'm going to work on having a balanced budget and start a savings account, right? It's a better goal. It's in your zone of proximal development, it's something you can actually do, whereas turning millionaire from one day to the next, only God and the lottery can help you, right? There is no way that you can just get there without the skills. So how are we building our goals and our plan for change? Are we doing something that is relatable and close enough to us that with some help we can be there? I am going to lose 100 pounds, not from one day to the next. You're going to need help. Are you learning some different lifestyle changes and you have somebody to support you along that way? 
are your goals within this ZPD, the zone of nearby development that you can actually gain? And we can ask ourselves the same question spiritually. I want to become a better person. Are you working on goals that you can actually grasp? Are you working on becoming more patient, more tolerant, perhaps volunteer at work, studying about spirituality, volunteer in the community? What are the small steps that are close to what you know, the ways that you can help that can get you to the next level little by little? Because the universe didn't happen, didn't evolve all of a second. It took 14 billion years for us to get where we are. I'm not saying that it would take 14 billion years to become a better person, but it will take a little bit of time. So what kind of goals and steps are we working on that gets us to where we want to go? Baby steps. Now, if we only stay in that inner circle, there is no learning. You have to step out of that inner circle. You have to step out of that comfort zone. You have to step out of the box. And every time you do that, there is discomfort. Doing something new and different feels uncomfortable, but that's how good things happen. That's how you grow. You have to be a little bit discomfortable because it means that you're stepping outside of your comfort zone to be able to embrace new things. So the invitation for the new year is that. What are we going to do now that we have the opportunity to know that learning will take place with other people in the middle of us interacting with our friends, with our grown-ups, with our parents, our family members, and that we just have to put ourselves out there just enough to make new friends, to talk to new people, to work on new things, to learn math, to learn English, to learn whatever it is that you want to learn. You just have to put yourself out there and do the best you can. Don't need to take big steps. You can take little steps and you will learn one little thing at a time and you will grow your brain, you will grow your soul, and you grow your heart. So what will you do now? And I think that is the invitation that Jesus has been asking us to accept in our hearts for a very long time when he came 2,000 years ago to show us that life does not end when we die in our physical body. He came back to show that we also come back after we die in many different lives. And we are rejoined in our families and our friends and our journey continues. That our journey is just not one lifetime, but many lifetimes together in a circle of evolution and growth in those billions of years as part of a universe where we are changing and growing just like our bodies to become better people, to become kinder, to become nicer, to become more tolerant to become more helpful. So in this coming year, let's see if we can do just that. Let's work on small goals, goals that are close enough to where we are so we can honor this beautiful divine tradition and intention that we are going to slowly grow every single day, just like the universe is evolving every single day and expanding, and just like our bodies are changing every single day, we too should change morally every single day. We don't have to do a lot. We just have to do that which is near us. We can work on our families who are close to us, our friends, the work that we do, our sphere influence that is very close. And we know, and we offer you also the opportunity that if you want to help in the Spirit Center, you can join us. There are activities here too. That's something else that you can do. If you don't know where to start, come talk to somebody as well. But nevertheless, we hope that you know in your heart that as you go through this journey, you will never be alone. Because much the same way that the Christ has come to show us that life goes on and that we never die even though our physical bodies die, we also reminded that God is always with us and always loving us. And so we need not feel alone or feel scared or afraid of change because God trusts us to change has empowered us to grow and to change. And so, if God is with us, according to Paul, who can be against us? If the creating force of the universe has set us in motion and trust us and empower us, the only thing holding us back is ourselves. Because everything else has been given to us so that we can get there. So I hope 
that you may continue to grow in spirit, in kindness, in heart, in practice of goodness, in learning, in praying, in whatever it is that you want to grow in or grow at. Because that's what you're meant to do, to do beautiful things, to do wonderful things. And as the year starts, why not make a plan, a simple plan that includes not only the things that we're used to, such as making more money, making more savings, losing weight, becoming more beautiful, more powerful, getting a different job. But how about also working on becoming kinder, more tolerant, of learning something new that keeps you fresh, of volunteering a little bit more in the community, of growing spiritually through a study group or maybe reading three or four books this year that you haven't read before. Let's do that. Let's honor that dynamic and beautiful divine DNA within us that moves us forward because this world could, have, could use our help. And I think we're also going to be fulfilled when we get there. So from the bottom of my heart, I hope that this year we can rest assured that growth is not only possible but within our reach and that we only need to take the initial steps to have the universe help us because the universe is always flowing in the direction of growth. And then I stopped talking. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I thank you for your attention and I hope that you find the energies and the joy that come from being connected to God uh, enough to move you forward in your task, whatever it is, to re-energize yourself, to grow together in this beautiful path that we call life. And with that, we're going to shift into...